It is a beautiful day in Clemson, South Carolina, home of the Tigers of the ACC, who today will take on the number 16 Wichita State Shockers of the American for a chance to head to Bloomington, Indiana. Quarterfinal action here in the NIT. This is how we got to this point. Clemson knocked off Wright State 75-69. Wichita State, they've been road warriors. This is their second straight game in the Palmetto State, defeating Furman 76-60, and again, the winner will take on the Hoosiers on Tuesday night. And with that, we say hello and welcome. Mike Morgan alongside the former All-American LaFonso Ellis. And LaFonso, you know a thing or two about a lot of different levels of college and pro basketball, but you also know the NIT. What's going through the minds of these players and coaches as they get to continue to play? It's an opportunity to continue to compete. And then if you can get all the way to the end, you get to Madison Square Garden, one of the featured story places to play in all of sports and for me in 1992 we had four guys on that team who ended up playing pro it allowed the scouts to be able to evaluate you just that another step scouts might be evaluating a couple of players we have today neither one of these teams particularly deep but they both have one dynamic score absolutely let's start with wichita state marquis mcduffie is an absolute monster mismatch at 6 8 218 pounds at 18 points per game fourth in the american conference in scoring and this kid can knock it down from three get in the lane can't continue to rely on a three-point shot he's got to get to the rack and for the clemson tigers Marquise Reed at 6'3", can flat out score the Rock at 20 points per game. That's third in the ACC on the year. Folks, he's had 20 or more points in six of his last eight games. Dropped 31 on BC. He's the master of the mid-range. He's going to have to be off the charts in his scoring today. Reed flirting with some more milestones today as he's five points away from 2,000. Also flirting with 500 rebounds all time as you look at Greg Marshall no stranger to the state of South Carolina he's from Greenwood a long ways away from Wichita this shocker team got off to a rough yeah. start it was a lot of turnover bonds and they had to work in a ton of new players but all of a sudden the light went on and you see what they've done the last 12 games absolutely stop turning the basketball over were terrific on the glass and that was really the change for this team remember only 11 percent of their experience returned from the last season and so you're watching a young team grow up right before our eyes. You never know what kind of crowd to expect at an NIT game. This one's pretty good. Good weather outside, great environment inside. Clemson, home team in white, has the opening tip, and we are underway from Little John Coliseum. Trap tries to feed Eli Thomas down low, but a turnover. This is Haynes Jones on the attack and quickly finds McDuffie, and there is one of the all-time scorers in Wichita State history. 35% from three at 6'8". You've got to find him on the offensive end. This is a Wichita State team that doesn't shoot the three well, but he's one of the two that can knock it down. Certainly a guy to look out for the rest of this game. Scarrett takes it in, and happy feet. A little too much on that pivot. So Clemson starts off the game with two turnovers. Yeah, missed an opportunity to come to a jump stop there. Would have given him far more options to be able to pass or take the shot. What are we looking for out of this Wichita State offense? Well, they're going to continue to move the basketball around. They love to play inside out, but they like to move Marcus McDuffie around so that you can't stay stationary and guard him. McDuffie right now in the corner. Guarded by Reed. They go up top on a three. And offensive rebound tracked down that time by Dexter Dennis. Could you do me a favor? Could you ask Greg Marshall if he could sit down a little bit? So <laughs> I'm sticking the same see. <laughs> He is right in front of us. We won't hold it against the coach, so he's blocking our view. Inside it comes, three to shoot. Pivot and a left-handed hook shot off the window. It's H&EK. Jamie Antonique out of Columbia. 16 points, 10 rebounds in that last game at Furman. I think early on for Clemson, they have to get Elijah Thomas, number 14 in white, established either at the low post or the high post. Thomas wheeling, and he almost lost it. Clemson just having problems getting a shot off. Shot clock down to two. Going to have to launch here. Reed at the buzzer misfires. Shockers up by five with the basketball. Haynes Jones, he's kind of their Robin to Marcus McDuffie's Batman. 
Greg Marshall got my text. He's stooping down. I can see that. <laughs> this is great. It's good to see he's cooperating. Didn't know you had that kind of pull, Fox. Absolutely. That's going to be a deep two. Again, we're playing with the FIBA three-point line, which is a little over 22 feet. More than a foot longer than the actual college line of 20 feet, 9 inches. Wide trap off the mark. And Clemson can do no right here in the opening stanza. Great feed, but an offensive foul called that time on Haynes Jones, the senior. There is Greg Marshall, who just picked up his 500th win, 56 years of age, out of Greenwood, South Carolina, about 70 minutes away from Clemson. Of course, the highlight for Greg Marshall led Wichita State to the Final Four yeah. back in 2013, and a couple of years before that, led Wichita State to an NIT championship. 72% yeah, win percentage over his 21-year career. 73% in 12 years at Wichita State. He's had a phenomenal coaching career. He's had to be a little more patient with this year's team than in years past. Pull-up jumper by Reed. Boy, he is so crafty, isn't he? Well, they're setting that screen hard, which is creating a little separation. And as I said in the open, he's the master of the mid-range. What a beautiful read and pull-up by Marquise Reed, number two in white. Reed's a guy who can hit the three, but his mid-range game is really strong. Ooh. McDuffie on a step-back three. That's tough. Thomas on a strong box out, rips down the rebound. And, Mike, I think Clemson against this tough defense of the Shockers is when they get them to miss, they've got to get out and try to get some easy ones in transition. They can't play all afternoon against that tough half-court defense of the Shockers. And Jones sets it up in the front court. And lost it. Out of the hands of Reed. Got numbers. Reed all the way, draws the foul. Block foul. On Wichita State, Jamarius Burton. There is Brad Brownell. Terrific season a year ago, leading Clemson to the Sweet 16. Now in his ninth year. Boy, time flies. Know, right? That's one of the longest tenured coaches in Clemson basketball history. And they narrowly missed the field of 68. A couple of heartbreaking defeats late in the season. Yeah. I don't know if anybody in the ACC lost more nail biters than Clemson this year. Yeah, including a two-point loss against a North Carolina team that many feel could win the national championship this year. Jamison and Newman check in for Brad Brownell's squad. Reed knocks it down, two-point game. McDuffie up top, guarded by Scora. Brad Brownell telling us a couple of defenders, Scora, along with Amir Sims, will draw that daunting task. Shot clock down to seven. Now five for Haynes Jones. Off a screen, three ball fired, and a brick right on the hand of Eric Stevenson. See, this is where they need their early push, Clemson. Look to try to get some quick strikes. That ball's got to touch inside and play inside out. Lead guarded by Dennis. 17 footer block. Great defense by Dennis. But then the recovery. <laughs> if first you don't succeed, try again, does Marquise Reed. So good in that mid range. Congratulations to Marquise Reed. He just hit the 2,000 point milestone. Wow. What a career he's had. One more rebound, and he'll have 500 of those. Jemison gets this rebound. And, Mike, those are the kind of shots that Clemson is willing to give the Shockers. They do not want the Shockers getting downhill into the painted area. Reed again mid-range. That time an air ball, but a great save by Jemison out of bounds. It will be Shockers basketball, and we come back. 5-5 our score here from Clemson. Marquise Reed already with all five of Clemson points. And here is the record breaker coming up to make it a clear 2,000 for his career. And that puts him in elite company, 2,000 points. He's one rebound away 
from 500. Look at these overall numbers. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a grab bag of great numbers by a young man who was not recruited out of high school, not recruited right. as a transfer after his freshman yeah. year, completely overlooked, and look what he's turned into. Uh, incredible. I mean, you knew he could score when he landed at Clemson, but I think what jumps off the pace, this kid averages six rebounds per game in the ACC, and he's only 6'3". Strong take off the mark by Haynes Jones. With pass into the corner, Scara sets up a three. David Scara, 36% from three on the year, but four of eight from three in the last game against Wright State. It's a good shot for him. Another one of these teams particularly proficient at the three. Wichita State, the key for them is that shot is return to sender out of the hand of Stevenson. Shockers might try and muck it up a little bit sometimes. They got to win ugly. Foul drawn with five on the shot clock. Dexter Dennis on the baseline drive. Yeah, Dexter Dennis is uh, one of those two guys that I was speaking about earlier who can shoot to three. 39% on the year using a little shot fake and escaping. The foul there underneath. I tell you what, I think he's going to be a dynamite player for the Shocker. 6'5", 208, really athletic and can shoot the rock. Good shot, Dave. McDuffie, why not? It's so fun to watch guys like McDuffie and Reed create. Yeah, I mean, using the shot fake there to get the initial defender up in the air. And then smart enough not to take it too deep with the floater. McDuffie with five to match Reed's five. Pull-up jumper rattled home by John Newman III, the freshman from Greensboro. I love the energy that John Newman III brings off the bench. At times he plays a little too fast, that time under control. Everything that the Shockers are scoring right now is outside of the paint. They've got to get something going downhill. Right on cue, partner Eric Stevenson launching a deep three. He's only 29% from downtown. Yeah, and that's playing right into the hands of the Clemson Tigers. We talked to Coach Brad Brownell before the game. We wanted to really put a lot of guys in the painted area and not allow much dribble penetration, and they've done that here early. Mid-range jumper knocked down by H&EK, a 6'11 junior out of Columbia. Yeah, fundamentally sound, excellent post moves can shoot it over both shoulders, and we've seen a little bit of his range as well. Doesn't shoot a lot of them, but he's 39% from three as well. He's got four points here in the early going. Shockers up by two. Under 13 to go, first half. Banging in as Thomas sets up the hook shot. Nothing but net, pretty move. And Mike, that's what we were talking about earlier. Clemson has to play through number 14 in the white. He is hard to guard when he catches it down in that post area. Side ball game, nine apiece. Whip pass to McDuffie. Blind pass sets up the baseline. J by Ricky Torres. Ricky Torres, another one of those Juco guys who have come in. Again, Greg Marshall. Ten guys, who you'll see today, who have never played Division I basketball before this season. McDuffie had his hands on it. Scora picked it up, though. Whips it into the corner. Here's Reed on a three. Knocked out of bounds, it will remain Clemson basketball. Uh, folks, we've talked about Marcus McDuffie's ability to score the basketball, but this is what I love about him. He could have taken this shot, but blind pass over to Ricky Torres, who knocks down the show, Jay. On Coliseum, we've talked about the inexperience for Wichita State. I mean, that term is used a lot. Oh, we're young, we're inexperienced. They're taking it to a whole other level. They returned just 11% of the minutes played from a year ago. Ten newcomers on the roster. And because of that, that man has had to be more patient than he's ever been, really. I mean, he's not used to what they had at the beginning of the year. They were losing games by 20, yeah. 30 points. He told us very candidly, I've never had that happen in my coaching <laughs> right, career. Right. But it, it's taught him to have a different approach, be a little more patient. Because yeah. as you know, Fonz, you don't want to completely 
knock down the confidence of these young guys and yeah. beat them up too bad. And you can get demoralized really easily, especially when you're losing, and now your coaches are coming down on you too. Mm -hmm. But I thought Greg Marshall handled that beautifully. I thought their inexperience was why they got off to a 1-6 start in conference, but now all of a sudden they stopped turning the basketball over, Ricky mistakes, <laughs> and they yeah. stopped allowing teams to get on the backboard, and that's been the real change in this team. It's actually been Clemson turning it over yeah. so far today. That's three early turnovers on the Tigers. And that's something Brad, Coach Brad Brownell of Clemson talked to us about. He was concerned about this team's ability, Wichita, to turn them over. And to your point, they've turned it over three times here. Can't give the Shockers additional opportunities. Double team and a jump ball. Suffocating defense by Clemson. H and Ike had nowhere to go with the basketball. Yeah, and that's John Newman. Watch number 15 in white, folks. John Newman, the third, the freshman, just heads up. He digs, sees that he turns his back, and he just gets in there and ties the basketball up. I mean, that is terrific awareness by the freshman. See if the Shockers can get the ball inside. Mm -hmm. They've been very perimeter heavy. Nope, they're going to stay that way. And a three rattled home by Echenique. And we talked about Echenique earlier. Again, 39% from three. Coming into this game, he had only made 10, but he was 10 of 26. He's very confident on every spot on the floor. Eight points off turnovers here for Wichita State. Tough shot, rebound, battle for, and finally scooped up. Nice play, pass on his back by Dexter Dennis. Shockers in transition. Here's that man, Marcus McDuffie on a three, but it'll be out of bounds to Clemson. How about that sportsmanship right there by Echenique? Well done. Should be white ball I, possession there. Yeah. yeah, that's what they signal. There we go. And the waiting hands of Amir Sims into the game for Clemson. Sims, one of the guys who's going to draw that tough assignment trying to guard McDuffie right now. They're both matched up on each other. Reed. Stop and go. That's going to be a carry. Wow. Another turnover for the Tigers. That's four in the early going, and that's... A rare one on Marquise Reed, who's usually pretty steady with the basketball. Yeah, it's a five-point game right now, and they've given up five points off of turnovers here early. Clemson's got to take better care of the ball. Stevenson. He walks. Happy feet at the free throw line. They give it right back. Yeah, Coach Greg Marshall is yelling at him right in front of me to take the shot. You're open. He wants him to shoot it. I feel like we have an inside access to everything Greg Marshall is thinking as he continues to patrol the yeah. sideline right in front of us. <laughs> you, there's Greg. I, I promise you, we're like two feet yeah. from him. Elijah Thomas needs a touch. Oh, there's a three from the wing, Amir Sims. He's been hot and cold. He was actually scoreless in his last game, yeah. 0 for 4, and Brad Brown Ellis said, we need Amir Sims to be more aggressive. Well, he was knocking that three ball down in their warm-ups earlier, and obviously he's found the range here early. It's going to be a big part of this team next year. And a runner knocked down. That's the lefty Haynes Jones. Former ju junior college All-American out of Hutchinson Community College. Wide trap goes up top to Thomas and back out to Sims. Now Reed will go to work around the screen. Lobs it down low, but telegraphed the pass. Another Clemson turnover. That's five. McDuffie all the way. Offensive foul. He lowered the shoulder. How about Amir Sims, number 25 in white, hustling back to put himself in perfect position to be able to absorb this charge. Sprinted back. Could see McDuffie coming up. Watch him move his feet here. Now he gets planted and able to absorb the charge. What a nice recovery there by Amir Sims. Perfect defense by the sophomore out of Virginia. I think he's going to be a really good one yes, in time. He is. He's yes, just he is. Still kind of getting some polish on his game. Nifty move, but it rims out. John Newman had everything 
but the bucket. That one touched every part of the rim, too. Under nine minutes to go, first half. And the way this game is, Fonz, you kind of favor Wichita State. They don't want a high-scoring shootout. Exactly. However, if they continue to kind of settle for the jump shot, <laughs> uh, Samaja Haynes-Jones knocks it down. He's only a 30% three-point shooter, one of nine for three over the last couple of games. But sometimes that's what your seniors do. <laughs> where, where has this been all year all right. long, right? Right. I mean, they shot 31% as a team. Yes. That ranks 324th nationally. Indeed. That was the shot that Clemson wanted him to take, and he knocked it down. Largest lead for the Shockers, seven points. Thomas, who's been quiet, got a paint touch, but unable to finish. Wow, how many point-blank range opportunities has Clemson missed here early? Too many for the liking of Brad Brownell, that's for sure. Break zone with the Shockers up by seven. They've hit five out of their last six shots. Dennis finds Burton. Under 10 to shoot. Burton weaving. Had it poked away out of the hands of Reed. Reed full throttle all the way. Draws the foul and will go to the free throw line for a pair when we come back. 7.34 to play. Shockers up by seven. Out here by the Clemson faithful for an NIT second round matchup. Yeah. Clemson battling Wichita State. The winner will take on Indiana. And a winner of that game goes to Madison Square Garden. A, a trek you're familiar with in your playing days at Notre Dame. Yeah, it was a great experience for us uh, back in 1992. Uh, got to the finals, losing to my co-worker Corey Alexander, my best friend from the NBA, Brian Stitt and the Virginia Cavaliers. But, I mean, an opportunity to play two games in the garden, to extend your season, to continue to compete, I loved it. If I know Corey the way I think I know Corey, he reminds you of that game pretty much on a weekly basis. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Smith ended up being the uh, MVP, and I tease him to this day saying they scratched my name off of him and put his on. Is that right? <laughs> Stiff was a guy who could fill it up oh, back in the day. he's a monster. And then, uh, as God would have it, he and I ended up being teammates. I was the fifth pick in the draft to the Denver Nuggets. He was the 13th pick, and how that's how that? our friendship grew. And we just saw free throws after immediate timeout. And one of the things I've always wondered as a former player, you know, you're in the rhythm of a game, you get fouled, you're used to 90% of the time going right to the line and shooting. Yeah. How did you like that two-minute respite before you went to the line? One of my top ten pet peeves in all of basketball is taking the timeout and not allowing the guy to shoot, shoot the free throws. You're basically icing them out. Uh, I wouldn't be a fan of it either. It's kind of the nature of the beast yeah. here. Clemson down by five. Wichita State has hit six of its last eight shots. The high ball screen has opened up a lot of opportunities for Wichita. Pretty right. shot by the lefty, Haynes Jones. He's got seven. Haynes Jones, the other senior, of course, to Marcus McDuffie. And Clemson just sloppy with the basketball in this first half. Well, not a good angle. Clyde Trapp picked up his dribble way too soon, and that's a difficult pass to make at that angle. Six turnovers on the Tigers. In traffic, rejected by Thomas. Shockers get it back. Shot clock is at 10. Baseline jumper, too strong. Flying in his trap to reel in the rebound. Tigers have not been able to get into a flow offensively, and of course, Wichita State has a lot to do with that. Well, and, and we should also point out that uh, Shelton Mitchell is missing from the lineup, so it's thin across the front line, but Clemson trying to ice that action there, and when you do that, you've got to keep the basketball on that side of the floor. But Samaj Haynes-Jones been around for a little while as a senior. He's finding creases and able to get in the gaps and knock down shots. Reed in the trees, hanging, firing, and missed it. Thomas gets it back. He has it rejected. And a battle right near the baseline out of bounds. It will remain Clemson basketball. Watch as Marquise Reed comes off. Of the, he's got to take that shot right away. What happens is oftentimes if you don't take the first early look, now it ends up taking a tough shot or turnover. When he's coming off that ball screen, just pull up. That's the strength of his game. 
Clemson has not hit a field goal in nearly four minutes. They get a good look here. Newman wide open, and the streak is over. A deep two. That's a big shot for John Newman there. Gives them energy off the bench. 33% from three. Gives them a little bit of everything. Energy on the defensive end. Can get in the gaps and get to the rim, but knock down the three ball there. And we welcome you inside the Little John Woo! Coliseum as another three knocked down by H. Anike. He's got 10 points. Mike Morgan alongside LaFonso Ellis. Second round action here in the NIT. It's Wichita State taking on Clemson, the two seed. The winner takes on Indiana in the quarterfinals. And of course, the winner of that game will head to Madison Square Garden for the NIT Final Four. What have you seen thus far in this first half for those just joining us now on ESPN, Fonz? Clemson's been turning that basketball over about six turnovers in this game that have led to eight points for the Shockers. And number 21 in gold is having himself a game. Jamie Echenike has got 10 points in this game. 10 points on four or five shooting, including a pair of threes mm -hmm. for the big man out of Columbia. Not the state capital here in South Carolina, but the country, Columbia, by way of Trinity Valley Junior College in Texas. Again, Wichita State. Ten guys that you'll see today have never played Division yeah. One before this season. It's the biggest rebuild that Greg Marshall has had, and as he told us, he's had to do a lot of yoga, a lot of meditation, <laughs> yeah. a lot more patience with this year's squad. Shot clock at five. And of the corner and stepping on the sideline was Dexter Dennis, the freshman. That's some of the patience we were just talking about. <laughs> a freshman mistake by Dennis lining up out of bounds. Absolutely. But Dennis does so many other things so well for him. Rebounds the basketball well. Excellent defender. I think he's going to be a stud. 6'5", 208, and a freshman, folks. Wichita State led by Marcus McDuffie. He's been somewhat quiet after a quick five points out of the gate. McDuffie and... Marquise Reed, this man right here, an elite scorer. Both guys can fill it up in a hurry. Reed leading the way now with nine points for the Tigers. The hesitation dribble froze the big, giving him an angle to attack to his right. That was pretty. James Jones, the other senior for the Shockers, sets up Stevenson. Good pass. Dennis, kick out pass McDuffie, looking to shoot. Fires up an air ball. Shot clock winding down. Scara scoops up the lost ball. The loose ball into the hands of Marquise Reed. And Reed going to reset. Calm the troops down. Find Sims back to trap now up top. Again, no Shelton Mitchell with that knee injury. He's going to be done for the rest of the year. So Clemson playing without their leader at the point guard spot. I'm concerned about fatigue impacting the backcourt of Clemson as we get later in this game. Reach in foul on Scara as he fouls McDuffie. 3.29 to go. Wichita State of the lead. Third in the ACC in scoring, and he's done it all season like that. 20 points per game. Marquise Reed got it going. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Cub Cadet. Step up to the ultimate all-around mowing experience. We are in Clemson. That is Rock Hill, South Carolina, the home of Winthrop, where Greg Marshall spent nine coaching seasons and took the Winthrop Eagles to seven NCAA tournaments. That, of course, helped lead the way to the Wichita State job. He became a hot commodity yeah. on the coaching circle. And his parents, again, he's from Greenwood, South Carolina. There's a look at Pops. He's got Walter Marshall in attendance as well as his mother, Judy. And a number of family members, about 50 in total, he told us. Here at Little John to enjoy Greg Marshall just picked up career win number 500 as Dexter Dennis gets a bucket off the inbounds. High pass hauled in by Amir Sims. Bounce pass down low and a two-handed flush by Javen White. And that's what Clemson has been missing, being able to consistently get into the painted area. That was a pretty pass. 
Watch as Amir Sims catches this basketball inside and drives it to the middle of the floor. Sees he has help coming over, and what a beautiful blast underneath to Javen White. And when you're around big guys on the interior, you can't play with, you gotta finish strong, and he did there. Clemson travel. in transition, Scora. That was a travel. Draws the foul. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted it, so did Greg Marshall, but did not get the whistle. I think he should have taken some Louis Vuitton luggage with this one. One, two, three. <laughs> that's clearly a travel. Now, in the NBA, they look the other way on that, Oh, right? the NBA, that's legal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, 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 threw, they threw out that rule book a while ago. <laughs> he could have taken an extra one. <laughs> if you're O'Bron, you get four and a oh, half, I think. Absolutely. And a pivot. <laughs> uh, here's Skara, senior from Croatia, yeah. former transfer from Valparaiso. Played for Croatia on the FIBA Under-17 Championship back in 2012. Had 16 points in the opening yeah. round victory over Wright State. Yeah, knocked down four of eight from three for a guy that shoots 36%. Going in that game, he's four of 16 from three over five games, but hit some huge threes to seal the deal. Been a while since this hometown crowd has had something to cheer about. Now they're getting lively here at Little John. Four-point game. McDuffie deep from downtown. No, Scara top floor for the rebound. Mike, and that's what's happening now is the Shockers are starting to settle for jump shots because they were able to make them early. They've got to get downhill, get something going in the paint. Oh, Sims wanted to find Scara. Scara went back door, and Sims says, hey, man, I need you back up top. That's the seventh turnover now for Clemson, who's given Wichita State eight points off of those turnovers, and that's really been the difference in this game so far. One thing Brad Brownell told us, he said he doesn't want to play Wichita State's game. He doesn't want this game to be ugly. He doesn't want the Shockers to be able to kind of mm -hmm. muck it up, so to speak. So far, this has hardly been a Rembrandt offensively, which <laughs> nice. would favor Wichita State. Yeah, a lot of turnovers in this game. 12 turnovers between the two teams. Three on the way by Dennis. Dexter Dennis out of Baker, Louisiana. And you have to know who the three-point shooters are on the floor for Wichita State. Dexter Dennis, 39% from three. You cannot leave him open. Timeout Clemson. Shockers up by seven. Well, we mentioned these two teams. Neither one of them particularly deep, but they both have an electric scorer to their credit. Marcus McDuffie of Wichita State, Marquise Reed of Clemson. They are the engines that make these respective offenses go. And you see so far, Reed has gotten the better of McDuffie offensively, nine points to five. Yeah. But it's Wichita State getting other contributions so far. Yeah, especially from guys like Jamie Echenique. Ten points in this game has knocked down two of three from the three-point line. He has been brilliant earlier. 6'11", 258 pounds, showing us a versatile game on the offensive end. Shockers not known for their three-point prowess, but they are shooting a shocking 5 of 12 thus far from behind the arc, and another turnover on Clemson. Well, Marquise Reed has to know that the Shockers are putting two people in his area, and so when he gets down close to the basket, he's got to come to a jump stop and find open guys. They're open on the weak side of the floor. In the cylinder foul on Amir Sims. And now a technical foul called on Brad Brownell. Yeah, I didn't see what got him so upset, but he is hot right now. I'll tell you one thing if there's anybody that questioned the intensity of some of these uh, NIT yes. games. Watch these two coaches. There's no doubting how badly they both want to win this game. Absolutely. Look at that stare down. My goodness. Let's take a look at Coach Brownell here. Oh. A little contact there. Wow. And McDuffie. An 83% free throw shooter comes up empty on both attempts. The 
if you're going to get teed up, you might as well have the opponent miss a couple of free throws and Brad Brownell still pleading his case. Much calmer now, though. Yes. <laughs> hey, he gave a good old-fashioned stare down. I've been on the receiving end of a few of those in my day, LaFonso. It's yeah. never, never a good thing. I thought I was going to have to go out there and help his grand. <laughs> There's still some John going on here. Brad Brownell getting his money's worth with his entire officiating crew. Anthony Chiazza, Clarence Armstrong, Nathan Farrell, our officiating crew today. Seven point game as we come up on the one minute mark of a and half number one. Three ball rims off and a rebound hauled in by Clyde Trapp. Some early three-point makes by the Shockers. They're now settling for the Jays. They've got to get back to attacking. Speaking of settling, I don't know if you want Eli Thomas shooting from 15. I'd rather have the big man of the paint. I agree. Eli's been rather quiet. He recently picked up his 1,000th career point for Clemson. I would have liked to have seen the Shockers go a two-for-one here that they could have the last possession going into halftime. Kick out pass, McDuffie on a rise and fire. And out of bounds to the Tigers. Well, if you want to know what kind of pace this game has had thus far, how about this, Fonz? Zero fast break points for both teams. Wow. You use the term, you hear the term from coaches, muck it up. Yes. That's, we've seen a lot of that so far today. <laughs> Absolutely. Flow and fast pace, yeah. that does not apply in this game. It's been a good old-fashioned battle. And at times when either team has forced the other to turn the basketball over, they've mm -hmm. had numbers in transition but have decided to pull it out. Right. We thought we'd see some full-court pressure from Wichita State, and yeah. that's what they're going with here. Three-second deferential, game clock to shot clock. And foul on Torres. Foul ball in three, Ricky Torres, his second. And that is the fifth team yes. foul. Again, NIT rules. Mm -hmm. We reset the fouls at the 10 minute mark. There is no one and one. Five fouls, and you put your opponent in the bonus. Mm -hmm. And that's where Clemson is here. Two free throws upcoming for Clyde Trapp. Clyde Trapp now a starter. In the absence of Shelton Mitchell, who's now out for the season, those knee surgeries has, have caught up with yeah. him, and it's a shame because he's a delightful young man who can really get after it out there on the court on both ends of the floor for the Clemson Tigers. Trapp knocks down the free throws. The young man out of Lower Richland High School, the same high school that produced the former All-ACC guard for Clemson, one Edward Scott. The side and high ball screen for the Shockers have been really good. I'd like to see McDuffie take the last shot here. Number one in gold. Two-second differential, but essentially Wichita State can play for the final shot of the half. Haynes Jones. Works and has its return to center by Scora. A chance at the other end. Reed, good if it goes, and it rims off. Final shot of the half. And Wichita State will take a five-point lead into intermission. Coming up, we'll set at the studio. Kevin Connors will lead the way. DJ getting things cranked up here, yeah, he Little is. John. Hey. He's in postseason form. Second round NIT action. Clemson, Wichita State. The winner takes on Indiana in Bloomington. Mike Morgan alongside Lafonso Ellis, who also plays the hits from time to time. <laughs> Lafonso, we, we kind of expected this could yeah. be this kind of game, especially with Wichita State. They like this kind of game with sure. some of the limitations they have. Now, they do have one of the top scorers in Marcus McDuffie. Yeah. But 
they were not able to get him going. They had some other guys step up, though. Yeah, I thought Echenique did a fantastic job in the first half of not only establishing himself inside, but he was able to knock down some threes as well. When your best player is having a difficult time getting it going, you got to have other guys on the floor to step up. And how about the big man stepping out, knocking down some threes, 6'11", 258 pounds, folks, 10 points in that first half. Echenique, not a guy they go to for a ton of offense. Yeah. He averages nine points a game. Typically, it's been the McDuffie Haynes Jones show, sure. but give Echenique credit. He's the guy that stepped up when they needed him to. Yeah, you got to give their, the Shocker guards some credit, too. They started at the end of the year, started to really figure out and understand where and when to give him the basketball, and they've done that today, and he's responded by being very productive. Clemson's offense out of sync in the first half and a rough start here in the second as Elijah Thomas just tried to dribble through the defender. Yeah, Elijah Thomas wasn't getting a lot of touches in the first half, and I felt he was a little anxious there. Usually he catches that basketball, gets to that point, and then he turns around and kind of backs you down there. But, man, another turnover for Clemson. That's really been the story. That's now nine turnovers in this game for Clemson. And Wichita State has turned those into 11 points. To have any chance of winning this game, they've got to take better care of the basketball here in the second half. And Clemson only averages 13 turnovers a game throughout the season, and that man could be on pace for a career day. H and E K now with 12. I tell you, he looks unfazed when he catches that basketball against the defense of Clemson. Thomas posting up on H and E K. And now it got offensive. physical, and that's going to be offensive. You mentioned the word frustrated. Eli Thomas mm -hmm. right now is a frustrated player. Uh, you know, he's the key cog on the interior. And sometimes with bigs, if we don't get touches on the interior, it affects us mentally. And that's exactly what's happened here in the second half. Look, he's just playing over the top, and Elijah Thomas knows better. He's a senior they depend on him to get them buckets on the interior. They can ill afford to have him sitting over on the bench, especially against a really good, deep Wichita State Shocker team. It's Thomas' second foul. He'll go to the bench with just two points. It's not smart. And Chanike going to work Woo! on a smaller defense now with Thomas out of the lineup. 14 points now for the junior out of Columbia. Every time down the floor, the Shockers should throw the basketball inside to number 21 in gold. See, now with Elijah Thomas out of the game, they don't have an interior game. Five guys outside tough the shot. paint, including Scar, who fires up a brick. That's a tough shot. Burton weaving, kicking. Pump fake that time. Everybody on the Wichita State bench thought Haynes Jones was going to fire it up. Sets up McDuffie. Step back three on the way. Got it. Marcus McDuffie, you don't want to let him heat up if you're Clemson. And folks, that's 6-8 on the dribble with that step back there. 7-0 run for Wichita State. Jamie Echenique has been unguardable when he catches in the post. <laughs> wow, what patience. Nice little hook shot. And Marcus McDuffie getting it going from three. Three ball. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues tonight at 7 and 9 Eastern time right here on ESPN with more second round matchups, including the Clemson Tigers taking on Mississippi State, little ACC SEC tussle. That'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Yeah, Katie Lou Samuelson has missed a lot of the season for UConn with injury, but now she is back. Three point marksman, or in her case, markswoman <laughs> for UConn. <laughs> And she couldn't have come back at a better time. She is an absolutely brilliant player on the offensive end for UConn. Clemson could use a marksman right about now. This yes. is a little bit of a danger zone down by 12, and they have not been able to get in sync at all offensively. Uh, number two in white here, Marquise Reed has got to get it going on the offensive end. Had a shot blocked. Rebound, and a putback almost goes instead of it'll be a foul. Javen White will go to the free throw line, the transfer from Oral Roberts. In case you joined us late, Marquise Reed did eclipse the 2,000 point mark. He needed five, he has nine. Yeah. Also the 500 rebound plateau reached by Reed. 
he's done his part for the most part, but Clemson turning it over, yeah. getting virtually nothing out of Eli Thomas thus far. And you mentioned it earlier, and I would second the notion. They miss the leadership yep. and the ball handling of Shelton Mitchell. I, I think if Shelton Mitchell, their point guard, their senior point guards in the lineup, they don't have nearly as many turnovers. Ten turnovers in this game that have led to 15 points for the Shockers. Mitchell with that knee injury finally having to shut it down. So Clemson playing shorthanded today. Again, the winner takes on Indiana in Bloomington for the right to go to Madison Square Garden. Echenique feeling it. Echenique dropping down another hook shot. Inside, outside, he's doing it all. And he's got a game-high 14. Well, I said earlier, he's the hot guy. They've got to continue to get him the basketball down in the low post, especially with Elijah Thomas out. Clemson has no answer for number 21 and goes. And a rare miscue by Wichita State as Jamarius Burton throws it wide of the mark. That's eight turnovers now on the Shockers. <laughs> Greg Marshall's looking at me going, where is he throwing the basketball? I have no answer for you it's, on that one. Uh, I was going to say, it's a fair question. I don't know if we're going to find an answer on that one. But Greg has to remember our agreement. He has to stand up 50% of the time and stoop down 50% right. of the time so I can see the floor. And he's also agreed to exhibit much more patience this year. Nice pass inside to White. And a little lay-in as Clemson starting to get some damage done in the paint. Well, what's happening right now is they've gone to that side ball screen. They should stay with it when they get on the offensive end. That's two straight buckets they've gotten off of it. Dane Jones, who's hit two game winners this year for the Shockers. McDuffie on the block. They don't get it to him. Shot clock to three. McDuffie finds the loose change and cashes in down low. How about the awareness of where he was underneath the basket? I thought he was going to hit that basketball underneath the rim. Good awareness there. Not a senior. A senior out of Patterson, New Jersey with 10. Scara lines up a three. Inside offensive rebound for Sims. Settle there, a long three for Trap and a whistle down low. It'll be against Wichita State. Well, sometimes that basketball just kind of gets going down on the floor. No one reaches down to get it. <laughs> the opportunistic Marcus McDuffie says, I'll take it. And finishes it around the rim. I'll tell you what, at times nothing has gone right tonight or this afternoon for Clemson. Oh, you got every, that right. Every 50-50 ball has gone to Wichita State. It's not as if they have played the cleanest of games, and yet they're up by 13 mm -hmm. here. Because they have, Wichita State has seven turnovers themselves that have led to 12 Clemson points, to your point. Reed on the drive. Reed takes it all the way. 11 points for the senior. Over 2,000 for his career. McDuffie on a three. Rims off. Tigers rip it away. Clemson on the attack all the way. And a foul called on Midgard. Timeout on the floor. Shockers up by 11 here at Little John. Well, nestled in that Greg Marshall huddle is the senior Marcus McDuffie, number one, leading the way in this game and leading the way this season for Wichita State. Over 1,500 career points. This is a young man who's made it to three straight NCAA tournaments before this year. Sometimes you got a senior, and then all of a sudden he's not playing as hard. He's thinking about the next level. That's not the case with McDuffie. In fact, he's been part of the rallying cry for yeah. Wichita State to win in the NIT. Again, you win this one, you win the next game against Indiana. You go to Madison Square Garden. Where is he from? Patterson, New Jersey, a short distance from MSG. So they have all rallied around the fact they want to get Marcus back home, near family and friends, play in the garden, and that would be a great gift for the senior who has meant so much to this program. And I think the team has really responded to that rallying cry, especially this afternoon. They've been locked in and engaged on the defensive end. Knocking down the three ball, making good decisions with the basketball. 
I like what I've seen from the Shockers this afternoon. McDuffie, incidentally, out of St. Anthony's High School. Of course, the Hurley brothers played mm -hmm. there. Rather historic program over the years. And the free throws make it a nine-point game. Clemson could certainly use a run. McDuffie sets the screen, gets it back. Whips it into the corner. Stevenson back up top to Haynes Jones, the other senior. Shot clock at 10. Haynes Jones going to rise and fire. Missed the three, but there's Midgard on the rebound. A young man from Denmark, seven foot sophomore. Wide open three from the corner. Left it short. And a good rebound in traffic by Eli Thomas back in the game with those two fouls. And Eli Thomas has to give them some offensive production. Thomas was not going to be denied. Took it right in on Midgard, the seven footer, and draws the foul. Elijah Thomas is a guy who gives them 13 points per game, and he's been quiet in this game so far. He's got to establish himself on both ends of the floor, especially on the offensive end, though, because they could use his inside punch, which will open up some opportunities on the perimeter for the Tigers. This is Reed sitting on 11 points. Reed, shake and bake, fade away, fire. And that is what Marquise Reed has been doing for the better part of his Clemson career. He leads the way with 13. Shot clock at 10 for Haynes Jones. Little shake and bake, step back, deep jumper, no, tapped around. There's McDuffie, and another possession off the hustle by McDuffie. Inside, Midgard hits the jump hook shot. Midgard had deep position in the painted area, two feet in the paint. Good job by the guards finding him. Thomas, who's been frustrated for the better part of this game, taking it strong that time. Folks, watch 33 and gold, Knights. Having a picnic in the lane there, I think that was about four seconds, but that's exactly what you should do, is you should bury the defender down in that area, because on that area of the floor, the defender doesn't know to play in the front, or on the side, most often in the back. Midgard able to take advantage there. Midgard who had nine points in the win on Wednesday at Furman, as Thomas misfires on the free throw. For seniors like Reed and Thomas, you start thinking to yourself at some point, under 14 minutes to go, potentially in your college career, yeah. down by nine. We've seen a different Elijah Thomas after he's come off the bench. Much more aggressive on the offensive end, looking to make plays. Thomas out of Dallas, Texas. Knocks down the second. Eight-point game, under 14 minutes to go here at Little John. Jones up top. And now denied the pass by Scora, and there's a steal by Reed. Reed, baseball pass into the corner, three on the way. Well, that would have brought the house down if Newman could have connected. I like the fact that the Tigers are playing a little faster on the offensive end. They've got to get some pace to this game to get back in it. Not a single fast break point in this game thus far. Pace definitely favoring Wichita State. Inside and hacked on the play is H. Anike, who's been really a hero of sorts today for the Shockers. Well, you got to give some love to Stevenson on this play here. Look at his eyes up. He sees the help. He knows exactly where Echenike is and delivers a bullet right on the hands. Good awareness there by Stevenson. Echenike working on a 16 point afternoon. The team is 11 and 2 this year when he scores in double figures. He's enjoying life in the NIT. 17 points today, yeah. 16 points in the win against Furman on 8 of 10 shooting. Boy, Trinity Valley Community College JUCO transfer, fundamentally sound, excellent poke moves that we've seen down in the box. And as I said earlier, his guards are starting to understand when and where to give him the basketball, and he's delivered time after time this afternoon. The Colombian, silky smooth at the free throw line, calmly buries a pair, and the lead swells to 10.
Elijah Thomas, number 14 in white, needs some touches in the half court for Clemson. Scara wheeling, dealing, missed it. Thomas offensive rebound, he's hacked. Eli Thomas slithering in and picking up another offensive rebound. Mike, what happens is when you get dribble penetration, as Scar did, you know that the weak side big is coming over to help. And if you're the opposite offensive big, in this case, Elijah Thomas, you run right to the front of the rim and you can get some opportunities for offensive rebounds. And that's exactly what Elijah Thomas did there. Second foul on mm. Stevenson as Thomas misfires. It's five team fouls, incidentally, on Wichita State. So again, mm -hmm. up until the 10 minute mark now, they will, they being Clemson, will be in the bonus with the NIT rules. No one and one. And as a result, Clemson should drive the basketball. Right. I'll tell you what, Clemson's left a lot on the table this afternoon, Mike. A lot of easy misses from point blank range, and they've not been able to make their free throws either. They've missed five free throws, or one of nine from three, and they have been way too generous coughing up the basketball. All that said, they're only down 10, but a lot of time to play. Shot clock ticking down. Torres lost it, and now it's Reed. Reed all the way, finds Scara, and Scara will go to the free throw line. And, Mike, this is the reason why I want to see the Tigers play with pace, because when you can get out against a good defensive team, now all of a sudden you catch them on your heel on the heels and you can get some opportunities to attack the rim. Nice job there by the Clemson Tigers. Scar a little better free throw shooter at 70%. Had the big game and the opening win against Wright State. 16 yeah. points, four for eight from downtown. Nine rebounds. He played 38 minutes. That's yeah. one thing about this Clemson team. They are not deep. So if you are a starter for Clemson, you're going <laughs> to log a lot of minutes. Marquise Reed, by the way, he's played 38 minutes the last three yes. games. He just doesn't yes. get tired. Iron Man. He has to do it now without right. step without Shelton Mitchell. A lot of minutes to go around out there. Shockers up by eight with the basketball. McDuffie. That your Nikkei's been good. I'd like to see 21 get a touch. McDuffie seeking contact, and he got it by Scara, who bailed him out. Timeout on the floor. Shockers up by eight. As we put everybody back in the Wayback Machine, 2011, just eight years ago, Wichita State, led by one Greg Marshall. NIT Championship. That was actually a veteran group. Sometimes it's a young team being groomed for the NCAA tournament. That was a veteran squad. They cut down the nets at Madison Square Garden, knocking off Alabama 66-57. And, of course, two years later, Greg Marshall did the unthinkable, leading Wichita State, a program that had never been to the Final Four, took them to the promised land. And you want to talk about a coach who has made a difference. There's the... The Greg Marshall section, of course, he's from Greenwood. That's <laughs> yes. only about 70 minutes away. He mm -hmm. told us about 50 members of family and friends would make the short voyage. They've been treated to a, a double shot of Greg Marshall in the Palmetto State. Of course, he was coaching the Shockers a few days ago at Furman in Greenville, South Carolina. Did such a terrific job at Winthrop. Yeah. And you see mom, Judy. 194 of those 500 wins came during this time at Winthrop. And several NCAA mm -hmm. tournament appearances, seven and nine years. Think about that. Nine-point game. Clemson has trailed most of the way. Pull up from 15. Count the basket for Clyde Trapp. Mike, early on, Clyde Trapp was going a little too deep on these ball screens, and he's made some really nice decisions here in the second half. Below the foul line, instead of going too deep, pulls up. That was the perfect shot to take. Good read by Clyde Trapp. And they're confirming who the foul is on. I think initially they signaled McDuffie. That didn't appear to be right. Correction foul is on 21. And now they've corrected it. It's on 21. Come on Echenique, now. that's Come his on third. There, there, there's a one in each of them. You know, <laughs> I, I can understand the confusion a little bit here. Uh, uh, they both have something in common. <laughs> I guess if you're playing poker, that would help you. 
In this case, they definitely don't want to see Marcus McDuffie, their top Absolutely. scorer, get in foul trouble. Absolutely. H&EK, who's two points off a new career high, will get a breather. He's been outstanding. Midgard checks back in. Asbjorn Midgard, whose mm -hmm. name in Danish means God's bear. They also have a poor bear Chandler on the roster, number 44. We haven't seen much of poor bear yet. Great defense there by the Tigers. Here's some transition for Reed. Reed crosses over, has it blocked, and a jump ball. Great defense by Wichita State. Mike, I'll tell you what, Dexter Dennis, number zero in gold, has done a fabulous job at times this afternoon against Marquise Reed. He's made some really good decisions. Defensively, he's been able to keep him in front, and even off ball screens, he's been able to come and challenge his shots late. I love what I've seen defensively from Dexter Dennis. I was going to say, you've seen impressed and excited about that young man since the opening tip. He's going to be a stud. Again, kind of a rebuilding year of sorts for Greg Marshall and company. Nice pass. Inside, and there's the two, two one-handed stuff by Mitgard. Some unexpected production for the seven-footer off the bench. Four points here in the second half. How does Clemson respond? Newman high off the window, and it rims off. Another possession that Elijah Thomas, number 14 in white, does not get a touch. That is not good for the Tigers. Should be either Reed or Thomas mm -hmm. getting a touch on virtually every possession. Mm -hmm. Haynes Jones on a three. Neither one of these teams have been able to get hot from the perimeter. It's been a slugfest of sorts. First one to 60 might win this one. Thomas on a high ball screen. Strong take by Trap, but a good job walling up by Midgard. It's a tough shot. Whenever you draw two, that means that someone's open. That ball's got to move around the horn and find the open guy on the weak side of the floor. Missed opportunity there for Clemson. Torres sets up Haynes Jones, six on the shot clock. Inside, Mitgard goes to work on Thomas. That time, Thomas swats it away. Here come the Tigers down by nine. Nine and a half minutes to go. Inside, Thomas. Nice. Passed up to score on a three. Got it. Best offensive execution we've seen from Clemson today. And notice whose hand that assist came off of, but number 14 in white, Elijah Thomas. Don't look now, but it's a six-point game here in Clemson. Does McDuffie have an answer? Kick out to Torres with eight to shoot. Torres probing. Torres leading. No. Thomas one-handed rebound. Thomas determined in the paint. Draws the foul. Eli Thomas has woken up here in the second half. Good things happen when number 14 in white touches the rock. We've seen him score. We've seen him get to the foul line. We've seen him assist. He's got to get touches every time down the floor. Not sure what's happening here. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. As soon as I know, I'll let you know, folks. It, we got a lot of commotion right in front of us. Both coaches are angry. I just saw Midgard say, hey, he pushed me, so do we have a flagrant foul here? Do we have a technical foul? Would love to have one of the three officials give us a signal. And now they're going to go to the monitor. I know one thing, it involved Midgard. Yeah, I, I was completely shielded. I have no idea what's going on here. The officials just screaming over to the Wichita State bench. Hold on for a second. We are looking. Now let's see what they're looking at. Edgard and Thomas bumping shoulders. And then Thomas yeah. gives him a push in the back. That'll be a flagrant one. 
against Thomas, unsportsmanlike. Hey, if you're Eli Thomas and you're a senior, you why? Can't do it. You can't do I it. I mean, you, you're starting to heat up. You're mm -hmm. leading your team back in this game. Yes. And that's now twice we've seen him with a couple of silly fouls early that had Coach Brownell have to take him out of the game. And they're just not the same team without Elijah Thomas on the floor. He's got to maintain his cool. Anthony Chiazza, Clarence Armstrong, Nathan Farrell, our officiating crew, and they just looked it over onto the monitor. Now a little bit of a conference here. It's at minimum an unsportsmanlike. Right. And now we get an explanation here. Alfonso Ellis getting the official word from our crew on what this call is going to be. All right, Lafonso, you have the secret envelope with the verdicts. <laughs> okay. What do we have here? Elijah Thomas was fouled, so okay. he'll get a chance to shoot his foul shots. And then there was a dead ball technical foul right. on Elijah Thomas, which Wichita State will take two free throws after that and get possession. Pretty much what we anticipated. Mm -hmm. And again, a silly mistake. If you're Eli Thomas, the senior who has been playing so well here do in the it, second half, it's just you unnecessary. Can't it. Yeah, you can't do it. I mean, All he, the momentum on the side of Clemson. And he's been the one that's created right. the momentum. So that does. The technical counts as a personal foul. So Elijah Thomas yeah. now with three as he rattles the first free throw home. It's his first make in four attempts. This, by the way, is the closest Clemson has been since trailing at the half, 29-24. Wow. So Moe is on the side of Clemson, despite the fact the ill-advised technical foul by Eli Thomas will send Marcus McDuffie to the free throw line. Nicknamed Gumby due to his length. Stretch the lead back to five with that make 12 points overall for the senior at a Patterson, New Jersey. If I'm Elijah Thomas, I'm feeling sick right now that I allowed my emotions to overcome me and put my team in that position. And again, especially because he's been the one who's ignited getting this crowd involved and making some great plays. See how Wichita State responds now. Echenique's been awfully good for the Shockers. McDuffie, shadowed by Sims, feeling it. A heat check three off the mark. Here comes Clemson. That's an ill-advised shot. That basketball's got to get downhill. Throw that basketball inside to Echenique, who's been so good this afternoon. And now a whistle down low. That'll go against Wichita State. That's on Stevenson, I believe. That'd be his fourth. And I think he took the brunt of that one. He's trying to catch his breath here. Cut him right up in the shoulder neck area. Watch as Stevenson's coming through here. Ooh, oh, my. Wow, what a shot. I hope he's okay. Really, he's having a tough time catching his breath as he walks over to the bench. Stevenson's got to say, man, Ooh. as if that hit wasn't hard enough, you're going to tag me with my fourth foul. Wow. Clemson having a tough time inbounding it. Finally reeled in by Reed up top. Reed goes to work inside. Runs off. I know that doesn't look like a good shot, but if you follow Marquise yes. Reed, he's typically adept at that kind of move. Indeed. Inside it comes. No, sir. Got numbers if they can push. Reed gliding in the front court, finds Thomas. Thomas working the block, high off the window, he missed it. Oh, it's a good look for Thomas, he just couldn't finish. Yeah, he's the one you want to take that shot. Meanwhile, the Shockers have missed their last five shots, clinging to a six-point lead, under eight to play. 
Here's McDuffie. He got it. Marcus McDuffie went in doubt go to the senior who has 16. I like that shot much better in the flow of the offense. Clemson guard tried to shoot the gap on that one and you should fade and that's exactly what Marquise McDuffie did there or Marcus McDuffie did there. And that one hurts a miss by Thomas at close range followed by a three and McDuffie and now Clemson living at the free throw line. Here in this second half, 6.58 to go. Don't go anywhere. Close game here at Little John. Marcus McDuffie leading the way for the Shockers. Catch every moment of the 2019 National Invitation Tournament on the ESPN Family of Networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 championships. Mike Morgan with LaFonso Ellis here at the Little John Coliseum. Clemson calling a sweet 16 appearance last year by that man Brad Brownell. He's done a great job in his tenure here with the Clemson Tigers. Now in his ninth season. Played at DePaul University Division III in lovely Greencastle, Indiana. Led the team in assist three years and if you don't know anything more about DePaul he's quick to point out that's where one Brad Stevens went, the head coach of the Boston Celtics. How about that? He's telling me that the two of them know each other quite well. Yeah. Brad Stevens, of course, who led Butler to not one but two Final Fours. Well, Kyrie Irving just called him out last night on, on TV in his interview. So uh, Kyrie's been pretty vocal this yeah, year. Yes, he has. <laughs> not a lot of good things going on right now for the Boston Celtics. A lot of turmoil internally. You got that right. Under seven minutes to go. Shockers up by seven. Full court pressure by Clemson. McDuffie doubled and throws it away. So the pressure works. 11th turnover on Wichita State. And Mike, these days you cannot panic in that corner when you get trapped. And the reason is, unlike the olden days, you used to be able to straddle the leg of the offensive player if you're the defense. Now you're, in the now you're not allowed to. So just be patient, hold the ball. They can't really crowd you and try to find the open guy. Marcus point. McDuffie, poor decision there. See who the Tigers turn to here. Thomas. 14 and white. He's wide. Give yeah, it to him. Yeah, he had a deep crouch post. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Midgard can handle him. you got to keep feeding the big fella. Eli Thomas. That's four quick fouls on Midgard. Watch how low and how wide Elijah Thomas gets. I mean, if you can't see him open, <laughs> you should just pull yourself out of the game. I mean, and for you young bigs at home watching them, that's how you sit down and get wide in the post. Well done by Elijah Thomas. That is the 14th travel. foul. Again, travel. one more. It'll be the bonus, but then a travel. Goodness. 11 turnovers. I know 11 is not that high a number. It feels like 20 because they've been so untimely and very often just unforced. Yeah, exactly. Well said. Wow, another turnover. They give it right back. Reed on a leaner. Pops out. Marquise Reed has missed some shots that the senior normally makes. We talked earlier about Clemson. Missed opportunities. Easy opportunities around the rim they've missed. They've left a lot on the foul line as well. Clemson has not hit a basket in nearly three minutes. Deep three on the way. Looked like that at the top of the backboard. No? No foul on Elijah Thomas, I believe. Clearing out. And that's on Thomas. It's his fourth. And it is. And Sims will come in. Thomas with four fouls and 6.07 to play. And he made some great plays. Getting fouled, attacking, getting to the foul line, got an assist. Can ill afford to have Elijah Thomas on the bench. Well, now, partner, you, I mean, you've got no post presence if you're no, Clemson. Zero. You are small and you have no true post players on the floor. McDuffie to Burton. And now, Haynes Jones, the other senior, with 10 on the shot clock. Little shake and bake. Feed down low to Burton. Five to shoot. Three on the way. Dennis knocks it down. They'll call it a deep two. 
Again, the three-point line extended here in the NIT to the feeble line of just over 22 feet, but a big shot nonetheless. Reed, that time a bit of a force knocked out of bounds. How about the shot fake, though, by Dexter Dennis? And this is why it's important to keep your hips down when you catch the basketball. See how he stays low, makes a little pass fake there. And because he's down, he can still load his legs and get into a shot. That was pretty. Nine-point lead for Wichita State. Clemson just can't find it from three. Now two for 11 from behind the arc. Mm -hmm. And many of them have been wide open looks to Mike. Almost a steal. Stop and pop off the mark. And a good rebound that time by Sims. Five minutes to go. Clemson in need of a run down nine. Ball's got to find Marquise Reed, number two in white. Reed pulls up from 14. And a tap in that time, slithering in Amir Sims. I love how hard Amir Sims dives to the offensive glass. Can Clemson get some stops here in the final four and a half? I think Marcus McDuffie needs a touch on this possession. McDuffie going to set the ball screen here, then dives in. Dennis feeling it. Yeah, that ball should have gone inside to McDuffie, who had a mismatch with Marquise Reed inside. Clemson on the run. Newman. Now trap. And Scara picks it up. Mike, that's fatigue right there. Trap has had to play a lot of minutes in the absence of Shelton Mitchell. Clemson two for 12 from behind the arc. Eight on the shot clock. Sims going to try to create, and a push foul on the floor by poor Bear Chandler, and that'll send us to our final media timeout. We step aside, 54-47 our score. Second round action of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. How's Long your bracket doing? Oh, I was afraid you'd ask me that. <laughs> if, if it's a North Carolina Duke final, I've got a prayer. Nice. Outside of that, the first two rounds have not been good to yours truly. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I still love you, bro. Thank you for that. <laughs> Tennessee winning, that helps. Mm -hmm. Tennessee surviving an overtime scare by Iowa today. Meanwhile, Wichita State trying to survive and hang around the winner of this game. Heads to the quarterfinals to take on Indiana and Bloomington. And that would put the winner of that game into Madison Square Garden mm -hmm. for the NIT Final Four, a venue that my partner, Alfonso Ellis, got the chance to play in, not only as a pro, but as a collegian in the yeah. NIT championship game. No, we were independent back then, so we played North Carolina every year on a neutral floor, and we always played them at Madison Square Garden, which I consider to be the mecca of basketball. Agreed. Well, not only do the Clemson players want to hang around, so does this crowd. Got loud just moments ago and just got the turnover. Wow. Mark, Mark yeah. Reed just got hit in the head and a no call. Yeah, he's rubbing his head. He got popped pretty good. Yeah, it's got to be Marquise Reed, number two in white, and Elijah Thomas, 14 in white, to close this game. Reed over 2,000 career points. He hit that mark earlier in this game. Trap all the way. High off the window, no good. Rebound into the hands of Wichita State. Five-point lead for the Shockers with the basketball. Inside, no. Follow, oh, yes. Echenique with a new career high for Wichita State. I beg your pardon, that's Poor Bear. Poor Bear Chandler into the game, playing some extended minutes. Clemson continues to be ice cold from three. Do you like that shot, LaFonso? I don't, especially at that time in the shot clock. I think they've been better when they've been able to get a side or a high ball screen and come off of it and attack the ACC area on the floor. Seven-point lead for Wichita State. And there's a steal by Reed, and he's fouled. 
big time player stepping up at a big time moment. He does not want his career to end just yet. Yeah, that's Jamarius Burton, number two in gold there. Only a freshman making an ill-advised pass. And if you're Clemson, these are exactly the kind of possessions that you want. You want to get to the foul line because now you can put points on the board without the clock moving. The clock is your enemy right now if you're the Tigers. One of the all-time leading scorers in Clemson history. Brad Brownell calls him every day because Marquise Reed, it's all he loves to do, play basketball every day. But you wonder if a little bit of fatigue starts to show up. He keeps playing 38 minutes. Yeah. And that time, miss on the free throw line. And, Mike, we talked about that in the first half, is what in the last four minutes of this game, because of the lack of depth in that backcourt for Clemson, would fatigue become a factor? And we certainly saw it earlier with Clyde Trapp, number zero in white. Reed knocks down the second six-point game. Full court pressure by the Tigers. McDuffie into the hands of Dennis. And a turnover. Forcing another turnover right through the hands of poor Bear Chandler. Now it's 15 turnovers on the Shockers. This is a Shocker team that started 1-6 in, in conference play. And it was plays like this. They turned that basketball over way too much. Only 11% of their experience returned from last year, and you can see it playing out here in the last four minutes of this game. Midgard's going to get back in the game. Poor Bear Chandler, just a freshman. Great opportunity for the Tigers here. A three would make it a one-possession game. Newman. Thomas, deep I, post. I like it. Thomas. I like it. Gets the bucket to go. Four-point game. Good things happen when Elijah Thomas touches the ball. And a reach-in foul. That'll be against Reed. Elijah Thomas does such a great job of getting wide and low when he catches that ball in the painted area. And if you let him get to his right shoulder, that left hand, it's lights out. I love how quick he made that move interior on the interior to completely neutralize the seven-footer's length inside. It's only the third foul on Clemson. You still have one to give under these NIT rules. Pass comes in to McDuffie, immediately doubled. McDuffie somehow gets it out, and now it's Midgard ahead of the pack on the flush. Much better execution against the full court pressure for the Shockers. Three on the way from Reed. Thomas flying in, boards it, and he's fouled on the floor. Once you get a trap in the backcourt, it is flooded back there. If you could see over the top, now all of a sudden you have a guy wide open. What a beautiful pass over to Hitgard who knocks, dunks it in hard. And Elijah Thomas, we've talked about how good this Clemson Tiger team can be on the offensive end when he's involved in the offense. What a nice, brilliant offensive rebound there by Elijah Thomas. Again, no one and one. Wichita State already committing five fouls, so Clemson will be in the bonus the final minute and 46 seconds. Thomas got off to a rough start in this game, working on an eight-point game and trying to help spark a comeback in this what could be his final game in a Clemson uniform. The only thing that miss does, you can't set up the full court pressure. I'm surprised that Jamie Echenique, number 21 in gold, is not on the floor. I was thinking the same thing. Top. Thinking the exact same thing. Shot clock down to six, a turnover. Reed on the steal, and his jersey... Now, this will be interesting. Uh -huh. He's definitely fouled. If you grab the jersey from behind, you risk a flagrant foul. Yeah, it should be two shots in the ball. And they are going to go to the monitor on this one. And who's causing the turnover? Elijah Thomas. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's two shots in the That's basketball two there. shots in the basketball. So Clemson has hardly played a flawless game. Some mm -hmm. mental mistakes, a couple mm -hmm. technical fouls. Now it's Wichita State starting to make some mental errors, and this one could be huge. Yeah, we've seen a turnover there by Jamarius Burton, number two, the freshman, and then there, grab, man, that's 
take a look at this here. In the NBA, we call that a clear path foul. Right. And that's the senior, Samaj Haynes Jones there. You gotta just let him go. The terminology might be different, mm -hmm. but the call is still the same. Absolutely. And, and the, the penalty. And the penalty. You, you simply cannot do that. Would expect to see two shots and the basketball here for Clemson. If you hit the free throws, it's a one possession game mm -hmm. and you've got the basketball. Yes. Long discussion. Yeah, still waiting. Officiating crew. Yeah. waiting for the officials to come let us know. We have had a lot of suspense waiting on a couple of these calls today. And it is indeed an F1 foul, flagrant one foul, we were just told. So Clemson will get two shots and the basketball, correct? Yes, two shots and the basketball. You heard the confirm. I was I was reading lips there, LaFonza. <laughs> so you were my confirmation yeah. there. No, we called it. And a costly mistake. Mm -hmm. And the free throws upcoming by Reed, 85%. One of the top free throw shooters all year long in the ACC. He got that one to crawl yeah. over the front yeah. iron. 17 points for Reed. This could end up being a five-point swing if Clemson can knock down a three on this possession. Wow. At minimum four. At minimum four, as you said, potentially five. And a chance to tie it up even with a minute 20 to go. This crowd does not want to see the season come to an end. There's been no lack of intensity or effort in this game today. I'd like to see this possession for Clemson end in a hide or side ball screen involving Marquise Reed, number two, as the handler. And I'd like to see Elijah Thomas involved in the screen. Wichita State has led this game throughout. We've had one tie. That came early on in the first half. But overall, the Shockers have been playing ahead just about the entire game. And I guess here is they might be checking on the clock. We already know what the call is. I still don't understand why Echenique is not in the game, though. I mean, I, he was dominant. Uh, there, there is no ex State. Yeah, I have to wonder. in this game. He has to be injured. I or? have to wonder if he's banged up. Yeah. I, I'm with you because wow. he was on pace to have a career high. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, he has not been out on the floor for close to 10 minutes. He has four fouls, but it, there's only a minute 20 to go yeah. in this game. Oh, here. Clemson basketball, Reed up top to Scar. They were checking the clock. We got confirmation inside Thomas, muscling his way in. He missed it from close range. Oh, no, everything but the basket. Now you just want your defense to be solid for Clemson. And if I'm Wichita State, Marcus McDuffie needs it in his hands. Timeout called by the Shockers. Three-point game here in Clemson. Don't forget Sports Center tonight after the NCAA women's second round matchup between Clemson and Mississippi State. Steve Levy and John Anderson will guide you through. They'll also look ahead of the Sweet 16 and some NBA. And a James Harden follow up his historic 57 and 61 performances. That's basketball's greatest crossover artist in this week's SCC featured as well. That's coming up at 11 o'clock as we welcome you back inside. Little John, Mike Morgan, LaFonso Ellis. LaFonso, this game is it's not been aesthetically pleasing at times, <laughs> but we thought we'd have a close one. Indeed. We got a close one. Yes. Now let's talk a little bit of strategy. You're Wichita State. You got a three-point lead. You got the basketball, but obviously you can't just run the clock out with 52 seconds to go. What are we looking at for both sides? Well, you want to work the clock because you have the lead, and I wouldn't take a shot until under 10, and I like to see that basketball get to Marcus McDuffie, their senior leader and leading scorer, number one in goal. And if they can get a touch inside, I'd like to see it go to Jamie Echenique, number 21 in gold, who's got 18 points in this game. 
You see foul trouble. Three shockers have four fouls in this game. Wichita State has coughed it up nine times in the second half. And for Clemson, when that shot goes up, all five guys have to box out. They cannot give the Wichita State Shockers a second chance opportunity. Shot clock under five. Haynes Jones has two game winners on the year, and he sinks that one in the clutch. That's a three-pointer. He's got ten. Got to get that basketball up the floor quickly. Marquise Reed's got to take this shot. Reed, no whistle. Ooh, I thought that was a foul. And now a foul on Clemson with 22 seconds remaining. Look at this shot. Wow. Stepping back on that one to create the little separation. Gets it off quickly and drills a huge three for the Shockers. He grew up in Wichita, Kansas, a junior college All-American, and the senior Samaj Haynes-Jones says, I don't want to go home just yet. Let's go to Bloomington, Indiana for a chance at the Final Four and the NIT at Madison Square Garden. Shockers will burn a timeout here, having trouble in down in the basketball. They're left with one timeout. Clemson has two for the final 22.1 seconds remaining. Yeah. Clemson's got to get some full court pressure. Look to steal the inbounds pass. If they can't steal the inbounds pass, they got a foul right away. But I tell you what, if Clemson should lose this game, they have to look back and say so many missed opportunities. Yeah. So many missed shots around the rim, left a lot on the line from the free throw line, and then Elijah, Elijah Thomas, your senior, inexplicably picked up a couple quick fouls. A technical yeah. foul. Yeah, a technical foul. Brad Brownell yeah. got a technical foul. That's only the second <laughs> yeah. one he's gotten in nine years at Clemson. Yeah. A lot of things that did not go right for Clemson, and yet here in the final yeah. minute, still in this game, but going to need a break or two in the final 22 seconds. And how special this would be for Greg Marshall in a year where they finally don't make it to the big dance to pick up two road wins in his home state of South Carolina and route to the quarterfinals of the NIT. Again, having trouble on the inbounds and almost a chance for a turnover. Trap had it. Clemson has it. Newman, he missed it. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Newman had it right at the rim and missed it. And, Mike, that's how it's been for Clemson this afternoon. That's exactly what we were just talking about. I mean, what a hustle effort here by John Newman the third to be able to come up with this possession. How about Trap there, able to save it inside. Newman doing exactly what you should do. Gets a good look at it. And, again, how many balls have we seen here for Clemson touch every side of the rim, Mike, and just fall out? It's been that kind of afternoon for the Tigers. It's been uncanny. I mean, they just have not been able to buy a break. They've missed 12 of their 14 threes. They've missed shots down low. Turnover bug caught them early on in this game. Yeah. And look, you can talk about everything that Clemson did wrong in this game, but oh, it's yeah. funny how we tend to do that when you're going up against a Greg Marshall defense yes. and Wichita State. They're not as loaded as they normally are offensively. They lost Landry Sham in a first-round draft pick now with the Clippers. But they still know how to defend, even if they're young. And they have defended well in this game. Yes, they have. And a timeout call with 6.9 on the clock. And we know how good of a player Marcus McDuffie is, number one in white there for Wichita State. 16 points in this game, but you got to give a lot of credit to Jamie Echenique, who was outstanding in this game, scoring 18 points and did it in like 20 minutes. Incredible. And a classy move by Coach Brownell to call timeout. The game no longer in doubt, but to let his senior and one of the all-time greats, Marquise Reed, get an ovation. Eli yes. Thomas, the other senior, another 1,000-point scorer, David Scarra. All three seniors getting a final round of applause from the hometown crowd. And as Clemson's season will come to a close, Wichita State, they won the NIT a few years ago. They've got a chance to do it again. They'll be heading to Bloomington, Indiana, to take on the Hoosiers. Alfonso Ellis, some final thoughts. Uh, great. In, in a game that was a little mucky from time to time, Wichita State pulls it out. 
For Alfonso Ellis, Mike Morgan saying so long from Clemson. We send you to Austin, Texas. Xavier battling the Longhorns.